ten things every woman should know about men. Who would agree with me that so many, or, or probably there are some of, of the things that women don't know about men. That needs to be taught, isn't it? Do you agree? Women, are you, are you listening? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what am I saying? Yes, and I'm saying that there are some of the things that you need to know about men. Does that sit well with you? Yes. Yes, yes. this creature called men. <laughs> you, need, you need to know it better than you do.
you, 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 you can train or, or teach, if you like, skills to your men. Are we together? No. Number two, he is obsessed with his job. Now that's why, I don't know how it, it, it probably comes from the, you know, the origin <coughs> that he was given the soil to till it. God says, here is the soil, till it and work on it. So, men are typically very much obsessed with their job. Whatever they are doing, they find pleasure in working. That's why it's in integral for men to work. Um, um, the men are like, are created for work. And when they do that, they become very much obsessed to it. So, as a wife, you will be, uh, you will do yourself a good well to support him, you know, to make sure that you push him to, to success. Every wife, wife will support his husband for his success. I think I'm on point three. Am I moving on okay so far? Yes. Yeah. I want you so that after this we engage each other. Point number three, he communicates the facts, but not his, what, can I hear it from you? Believes. Believes. So that's a man, he just straight, he will go straight to the fact. Not communicating feelings. And that's why sometimes um, there is a statement that says, uh, men don't cry. Because crying is an expression of feelings. So, generally, men don't uh, show feelings. Am I talking to you? And sometimes, that's why men, sometimes some men, they do horrible things. Afterwards, you know, they are cool. You know, check, 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 check with them. I mean, check at them, at them those who are convicted when they are going before the, 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 the court of law. You know, when they are investigated. Very few of them show remorse, if you know what I mean. When a man stands before the judge and is convicted, you have raped, you have killed. Very few of them show remorse. But men, men, most of them, they lift their head even high. They're looking at people, some of them greeting, hey, what, what? as if nothing has happened. When you, you check on them when they are being convicted, here in Zanzi, we have so many courts that are happening now. You look at them, it's like it's one of those places. And it's because they are detached from feelings. Whatever they have done, it, has, it doesn't affect them very much. Am I talking to you? Yes. Man communicates the facts, but not his feelings. <coughs> Now, with, there's a differentiation between women and men. And you can go with me here as you are able to see it. Uh, women usually speak more. But men usually what? I don't hear you. They speak less. Women tell facts and what? Whereas men stop at what? At the fact. Yes. Did you did you rape the person? Yeah. How did you feel about that? You know? But if you were to uh, ask a woman <coughs> the person, you know, were you raped by this man? Yes. And she would add more. Explaining the feelings, how it happened. But whereas with the women men, you may not get details. You know why, why some of the courts, they continue to happen? I mean, to continue to, 
to be there, like uh, we have uh, Meyua's case that's happening. It is an unending case. Because those who have been convicted, they don't want, they don't explain anything. They just speak facts. This, were you there on this date? Yeah, I wasn't. And they stopped there. It is the job of the prosecutors to continue to, to probe and say, then tell us what happened on this day. Tell us. If, if that case was involving women, it would have been long over. Because women, once they speak, they, they can finalize issues there and there. Women unburden their hearts. Whereas men try to hide true what? Feelings. feelings. They hide. Men don't show true feelings, how they are feeling. Point number four. <coughs> Man makes decisions by logical uh, <coughs> logical what? Reasons. Reasons. We are studying men here for you women to understand the, these creatures because you stay with them. <laughs> Alright? And some of you, you have got these creatures, they are still young. But you need to know and understand them, isn't it? They make, make decisions by logical reason. <laughs> you know? <laughs> this is um, reasoning, logical. It must have, they must understand it. One plus one is two, isn't it? One plus one is what? Two. But if you begin to say, um, one, A plus, 1b that becomes a, a, a mathematical problem okay they don't they cannot you cannot solve that one but give it to women they can solve it this is because we are told men have got um, two hemispheres of the brain function differently okay we, we understand the, the brain, isn't it? The brain, I think I have a picture here of the brain. And this brain, because it has got two hemispheres, that they function differently from that of a, of a woman. The male one, male, they say it, it functions, it has got a linear thinking, linear thinking, straight line. Whereas women or female brain, it just it's 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 dispersed, it's global thinking. The way we think, okay? It is says that a male sees parts than the whole. Whereas with women, women or female sees the whole than parts. What does that mean? In other words, um, if, if one way to, if a man were to stand up and describe the nature here, it's easy for a man to come here and say says that hey, there are many, um, the hall is full of women, or the hall is full of uh, of men, and end up there. The woman, woman would say, the world is full of uh, uh, male, female, children, elderly. Women go, they, in their explanation, what they see, their observation, it's, it's a whole or it's, it's, a, it's more than what a male sees. We have already mentioned male uses logical reason, whereas women use intuition. Now, intuition, that is something that men do not have. They arrive at an answer without explanation. Those are women. 
They arrive at a what? An answer, An answer without? And they do. You will never know where they get it. But somehow they just know. They can tell you that you, uh, uh, you maybe you in, in your, in your, they send you to, to buy something. And then in your coming, they can tell you that, hey man, you have delayed. You should have been here in time. And yet they were not with you. And it's true that you delayed. You did not go to the shop and come straight home. Women can tell you that. Haven't you heard of that old man who tries to tiptoe while the woman is fast asleep? The woman is fast asleep and the man is coming home tiptoeing. Late! And the woman, just from nowhere, while she's sleeping, so she said, Ubuya Ape. <laughs> While she's sleeping, she says, where do you come from? And at that time, as a man, then you want to explain, you don't know where to start. Before you finish explaining, she's fast asleep. But they, at that time when you were coming, she knew that you were coming. Okay? So women, they have got an extra wisdom uh, that somehow they, they are God-given. It's in them, which men don't have. You know? We are together. So I think my other example will be that one when it comes to finances. General, I am, uh, this is a study, by the way. We, we don't put a conclusive answer or solution. But generally, women are very good when it comes to finances. They, 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 we have got more women that are, that are balanced. They know how to take care of finances than what? Than, than men. Amen. Yeah? Amen. Men, they, you can give them cash and, and it will not last a month. The same cash you give it to women, it will last for two months. And, and doing more probably the same thing. So, if, if, you, if, you, if you are one of those let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. If you are one of those families that kind of follow what we call um, a functional family, functional families. I think we know we have got dysfunctional families, functional families. Functional families, ideal family type. Ideal what? Family time. Where in uh, minutes, okay, okay, meetings are held in a family. Meeting. There's a family, every family must have meetings, isn't it? There, there are families, there must be a chairperson there. <laughs> in the family. There's somebody who, who, who's, who's recording. When there are plans, somebody must be there to record what? Yeah, discussions. And you must review. On such and such a date, we sat and we were talking about this. Now, what, what do I want to say here? Uh, I think I, I missed that point. I wanted to say that if you are one of those functional uh, families where you do things properly, uh, you would do well to appoint a woman as a financier or as a treasurer of the household. As a what? Treasure. Treasurer of this. So if you, you were to, when, when they, you are electing, who will do what? Give the responsibility of finances to a woman or a mother or a sister or a, a girl. She will do 
uh, proper job on that one. Okay, what, what are we talking about? Okay, uses intuition. Yes. Now the, the two hemispheres. Since both muscles are valuable, what should both husbands and wife remember to do? Okay. Let me pass this question for now. Be okay. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor giving preferences to one another or to one the other. Another, yes, that's Romans 12, verse 2. In other words, you need we need to, to be kindly affectionate. In other words, our love, our connection, we need to do to, to be kindly to each other. As husband and what? Wife, male and female, because our thinking is not the same. Okay? Are we together, church? Now, I'm in point number five. Okay, yes, yes, point number five. A man wants his wife to stay. <laughs> A man wants his wife <laughs> to stay attractive. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, as a, as a woman, you will do well to make sure that you are always what? Attractive. For the sake of your man. So it's easy for us gentlemen to go with uncombed head or hair. We don't take time much to take care of the head. It's not a big issue about us uh, men. But with women, it's a big issue. Okay? And it, you will do well if you keep it like that to take care of them. Because it will make you attractive to, to your husband. Are we together? Uh, haven't you asked yourself why? When we go shopping, who spends most of the time doing shopping, even if it's just window shopping. <laughs> huh? Let alone getting into the shop and touching and, and seeing and trying to fit, even though sometimes one doesn't have money. They insist we want to fit. I don't know if that makes you feel good as women. It makes you feel good that at least you have fitted and you took you took a picture, <laughs> even if the clothes are not yours. <laughs> yeah. So men don't have that. They are not made that way. If they are not going to wear the, the clothes, they will not try it. No, we don't. We don't shop as well. Ah, and they will, men will not even go shopping, <coughs> especially when they don't have money. And it's one of the things that makes them shopping. It's one of the. It's. Back, back, back seat. You know? So that's why women, you need to understand your, when you, you are with your men. They will get bored very quickly when you are lingering around, moving around. They will rather say, I, you will find me in the car. <laughs> but because women are people who, who want to explore things, they, they, they want to, they will delay and then uh, spend their time there. With men, wants to be able to say to her, yeah, well, okay, to her, words like this, you are all fair, my love, and there is no spot in you. This is within men. Men, is, they are capable of telling the, their wives, you are beautiful. It's, it's within men. So for you to be attracted, that will be very good. You can read that from the book of Solomon, Song of Solomon 4, verse 7. <coughs> Women. Yeah. Before marriage, they took time and care to be attracted. After marriage, she should
should what? Should continue taking care to stay, stay attractive. Unfortunately, some women, they forget this. <laughs> Once they get married, they think they got now, you know, the jackpot, and they relax. Once you relax, the man, because he is, you know, he's thinking forward, they, they are easily, they can easily look to the next door neighbor and, and be able to express the same feelings to the next door neighbor. Okay? So women should, should excite him with their sparkle and perfume. Can we say perfume? Perfume. <laughs> perfume. So once in a while, in a budget, as a woman, you must say, buy me a perfume. Buy me this and that. For you to keep yourself feeling refreshed. Okay? Now, my, my wife is very industrious. Uh, I used to, to know the things that she sells. She sells so many things, my wife. She began by selling, what do you call this, uh, containers, shepherds. Very industrious. And then I thought she had ended. I saw she was selling um, um, this company, Avon stuff. She was selling that. And now of late, I know she's, she's also, she's a, she's a teacher. She, she is selling at, at school there. Only, I think she has opened a shop. <laughs> she sells so many things uh, to children and to teachers. So back home, we have got a, a piece of land. We plow. And we, we take the, the, the maize for grinding. You, you know, guess what? She also sells that. Maize, grinded maize. So I'm trying to say that, oh, mom, I know from my wife, they are versatile. You know, they, you, you can't say they are doing this. They do all things, of, all sorts of things. But it's because they, the way they have been made. But whereas with, with a man, very, very few men, you will find them doing extra or double jobs. Once they are focused on one job, that's thrown through. He's a mechanic, he's a mechanic, he knows you know, how to fix cars and nothing else. Point number six. What does it say? He is stimulated by what he sees. Now, a man wants to see a beautiful woman. He's attracted and stimulated by a beautiful woman. That's why it comes easy to say, to notice, to say, hey, my love, today you are beautiful. Your hair is nice. What, what, nice, beautiful. You are smelling good. Something like that. It comes natural. These are what? Men. So we must try by all means to what? To get his attention. Okay? If your husband is not giving you attention, it means you are not trying harder. <laughs> try to win his favor. <coughs> From little things, I can I can come up with some of the things. From little things that you normally do with with your food, because what most of the time as ladies you spend cooking. Okay, try it with your cook with your food. You know, and listen to him as he comments on what you have cooked. Because I know all men likes to eat the food of their wives, the food that has been prepared home. All men want to eat that. So, if you are not giving, if you can't, I mean, catch him on the things that, you know, that are there, disposal, at home, that are there. Don't try to come up with a magic. The things that are there, okay? Use those things. So you can catch him on the meals. 
Okay? Uh, I know back in the days when we grew, we will hear Abu Mama, they will say that this one, this food is for your dad. Okay? And the food, the plate for dad, it's, it's respected, it's put aside. So, also when you cook for your, your husband, make it special. This one is what? It's for dad. Even when you, you know, you are dishing, you don't just do one spoon there. Okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you can do one spoon with children, isn't it? One spoon with children. But for here yeah, and for yourself. Dallas <laughs> is But if you are dishing for your husband, dish your whole heart in there. Amen. And make sure, and he will eat it. <laughs> you know? For those of you who, who make um, a, a relish uh, to be counted, if it's one for every other person, make it two for who? <laughs> for daddy, two. Amen. If you are giving two, two for others, make it how many for daddy? <laughs> <laughs> now, why this is a woman? Why she is stimulated by what she feels? A woman is stimulated by what she feels. He is stimulated by what he sees. Yes, he sees. It must attract. It must pay. You know. You know. Take one's eye to look that's what stimulates the man i went together i'm just afraid of making other examples here and you think that <laughs> this pastor is not baptized <laughs> yeah now listen <coughs> you can read for yourself that one eh? <laughs> so that it, it is another one. This is a study. <laughs> yes. Now, even if you can quarrel with your husband, you know, and you have a very hot debate about who is doing what and who is not doing what, as a husband seeing his wife in what? Face night way. Is it ready for what? For sexual. for sexual relationship. But sometimes not so with the women. So this is what we are trying for you guys to, I mean, as ladies, to, to notice about your men. Don't you think that when he's angry, he's not ready? Okay? <laughs> And sometimes, sometimes it becomes a medicine for him to cool down. Amen. Uh, say that you've done it. This is a, a man. Because you check, um, those who have studied hum, a, a, a human being, they said there was something they called testosterone. Yes. When it is high in men, it needs to be released. Because sometimes it can become too high. And then there is a need to what? To release it. And it's a hormone. And that hormone needs to, be, once in a while, it must be what? Released. Once in a while. <coughs> yes. <once in> a while. <laughs> Does it say something to you, there, my Yes, yes. Once in a while, it is to be released, and that's why that why it might be between what in a week or in two weeks or something like that. Amen. Okay. Or, 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 or
No, don't, don't, don't put me in a corner. <laughs> But don't they say the taste of the pudding is in the what? The taste of the pudding is where? In the eating. So if if a man wants to check out if the, the pudding is okay, he must what what? You must take it. Taste it. <laughs> Point seven. Men need sexual expression of love. This is what men. You need to know your men need sexual expression of love. While you, okay, let me begin with the yellow color. Remember the three expressions of love are what? Casual, intimate, sexual. Now, I think I've learned it from an old pastor who says, yes, uh, these are three, you know, expressions of love. You can say, I love you meaning casual, you know, like I, I will be able to say, hey, I love my wife being here, and she's not here. I, that's a casual speaking. Mm -hmm. But one day you will meet me, me and my wife, holding hands in a mall, and that is what? Intimate, that's showing of love. And sometimes we will, myself and my wife, we will what? Show love to each other okay that's what we call sexual relations now it says while women stop at the one two or three men moves from one to two to three <laughs> what it says is that women are satisfied to be told that they are loved that, that would be good and women are satisfied to be intimate, to be, intimate, to be whole, just in, in a walk. We, you know, so that is for a man. If you, you know, you know that you can hold your woman and tell her, I love you, and that will be enough. But with men, it's not like that. Men wants to complete the whole race. <laughs> Are you getting, getting it? Yes. They want to move from casual to intimate and to what? Essential. Okay. I don't think I need to read that. Right? Do I have to? No. Okay. Let no one seek his own but each one the other's well being. 1 Corinthians 10, 24. We kind of forget that we have been created to, to make each other what? Happy. You know, in other words, your happiness, you don't owe it to yourself. Your happiness, you need to pass it to your, to your spouse. Yeah. Pass your happiness to your spouse. Point eight. While she experiences menopause, he has midlife challenges. Can I see those that are going through menopause? <laughs> you better drink water, my sister. <laughs> those that are going to midlife crisis. <laughs> hey, <laughs> So life is like that. There is what we call midlife crisis or midlife. And there is what we call monopause. These are breaks in life which kind of uh, reduce your speed as a young person. You see, all of us, we have the speed of a young man, a, a, a boy that I saw him going up and down here. I don't know where he is now. He's with others. That's the energy. They have got energy. 
But as they grow, that energy gets finished. It becomes stronger when we are youth. You know, the energy is there. That's why it is good to get married at your youth. Because the energy is there. But as you grow towards after 30 to 40, you are going the time of taking break. You are reducing, changing gears now. They used to do, the things you used to do back then, you no longer do them as <laughs> So it's very much important to reduce. And all of us have been made by God to, to, to be able to go in, into that kind of life, life, you know, where you, you they will call it a what? Change down. Change down. So for ladies, it's menopause. By that time, the shop, the industry is what? Closed. The workers have gone home. <laughs> the workers have gone home. You can no longer pay anyone. <laughs> There are no workers there. But with men, it's the opposite. At that time, many shops can still be open. <laughs> that's why we call it midlife crisis. <laughs> so you need to know, you women, at what stage is my man? Because that time, instead of him changing, doing, uh, uh, you know, change down, he increases the speech. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how different we are made. So while she experiences menopause, he has midlife challenges. This is the time we <laughs> uh, Let me finish, I'm about to finish. Just write it down. <laughs> This is the time where in you see us dressing like young young stars. So we are competing in every respect. You know, when we go to the shops, I, I you know the young stars is that the wardrobe. I also go there, dress like them as well. You know, that's that's a you know midlife crisis. It's time for storm taking. You know, man, he compares goals and accomplishment. Now, if at that time you don't have a house, you don't have a car, you don't have a child, you don't have a wife, that, that time becomes a challenge. If, if many fail us, there is a depression, low self-esteem. If you, you don't have some of those things that I've mentioned, then there is something that kicks in automatically, we call it depression. Because maybe some, you have also lost a job. If you have lost a job at midlife, then it becomes something else. It's an added pressure. And that pressure, we call it depression. Because it's too late to be running around looking for that. What remains is a depression. And depression is overstress. And then comes what we know as low self-worth. Then comes also health problems also arise because of aging. Now some of the of the of, of the diseases that attack um, men when they are of age commonly which is probably 90% of men suffer is what we call prostate. What? Did I say prostate? Prostate, and it's a disease, prostate, a gland. Mm -hmm. So they, they need, that's why men are cautioned that once every year they must see a urologist. A urologist, somebody who, who checks your, you know, how you pass water, and your, you know, your letra, the bladder, and all that. Okay? Now, now, that's the danger of whilst he might, as a man, have so much, you know, wanting to compete with the youngsters and this and that, but there are diseases that might be cropping because of aging. <coughs> now, a supportive wife will help her husband to cope successfully. 
Okay? A husband to hope successful. Alright? Was that clear? Point number nine. This is the man. He hates to say, I need help. The poor man. Though he may need help, struggling, but he cannot say it. He will want to act it. That is always good. How would you say? Good, good. <laughs> always good. <laughs> In Proverbs 31, verse 26, a woman of honor opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. Because there's this tendency of sometimes when you realize that your man is aging and he has uh, more, no more strength and he's full of diseases now, there's a tendency of undermining, you know, and undermining the part of men. But the Bible says you need to always continually support the man and speak kindly to her. Okay? I mean to him, yes. Do not flood him with the ready answers when he is ready to speak. Listen and settle him with what? Love. As a woman. Listen to him and encircle him with love. What point is that? Point number 10, it says, he cannot resist forever his wife's tender, loving care. In other words, um, if you continue to, to come closer to him, you will find it difficult to, to, resist, to, to resist your love. So continue to, to show him love and mercy. Because in the beginning, this is how life is. In the beginning, it's us. Who, as men, because we married you while you were young, remember? You are younger than us, isn't it? Yo, it's us who take you as our children. Uh, this, this is where the term uh, baby came from. <laughs> you are our baby, isn't it? Yeah, you are our baby because you are young. But as time goes by, we are aging. As, as men, we are aging. We need to be, babe. we then become babies. You are our mother now. Mm. The, 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 the wife becomes a mother. Then you need to take care. All right? The Bible says, and this is the promise of God. And what did they say here? Yeah. Let us not grow weary while doing what? Go. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So don't, don't give up on doing something good. If, even in your family, continue to do that which is good. While it is exciting to understand the earthly man, it is even more intriguing to experience the heavenly man. Maybe here, before I move forward, I would want to entertain uh, Questions. I saw, I think we had questions. Questions? Yes. Let's entertain questions. I see question one, two, three. Yes. Uh, okay, I wanted to ask um, you, you talked about uh, women going through many wars and then the, the men are now accelerating. So, how do you balance that? Because uh, uh, I understand that that's how it is its nature. So, in as much now, the men on the other side, on the other side, how do you balance that? That's a big question. How do we balance that? <coughs> you want to answer this one? Okay, answers here. Yes. So, menopause is the age where a woman can no longer conceive. Right? Yes, yes, yes. And she can be actively, can she can still be sexually active. Do you want to ask, is that a question? No, I'm answering. 
<laughs> but we are putting it like it's a question. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a, I'm going to say what I, I understand. Let me let you guide us. Yes. So, from my knowledge, menopause, it's a normally, I don't know, because doctors say it changes. Depending on the diet that we are taking in as well, we are aging faster than the natural age that we are supposed to. So the last lesson that I heard, <coughs> menopause was at 35. But when I heard it pushed now to around 40, 42, 45, something. So I'm, I'm glad that she asked that because it was in line also, that's where I pointed and I also wanted to react to the question when you were addressing that. Yes. So the issue of our age difference as a wife and a husband, which is very important. When as a man when you choose a wife, you must also put that in mind. That is you grow. Time is up so that uh, I don't remain alone here. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Okay, so okay, when, when you when you choose a partner, you must also put it in mind that the age difference. As for men, I think four years, five years, a woman should be younger than you. So that uh, that period when you comes. You are also not far away from each other. Because when, when, when a woman is maybe, it might happen, and I do not insult people who are in that position, that uh, if a woman might be older than you, that's the uh, way you get those crises, whereby a woman now is already on her way out. And you are, you are still demanding more. <laughs> so it might be a challenge. And also I want to challenge men. Yes, yes, yes. I think there is a limit in that. On both men and women. Exercising is a key. So by being active, you can also delay some natural uh, crisis that can, we can encounter as we age. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, then I come to number two with you. I want to answer. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, traditionally, or culturally, we, when we, a wife becomes like that, we used to give a, a sparring, but we can just do it now. Let's do it. Let's do it now. It's like a. Become a vegetarian. Something is difficult for the case to be done. What we call a, I'm forgetting the templates to say templates to say in life we, we get to such situations, but the men need to be templates now because it's a situation which has come to you as a family. So it's like he's stopping to eat meat and becoming a vegetarian. It's difficult, but it is. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Are we together? <laughs> Let's listen to each other here. My, my sister, you want to come? Okay. So I have a comment on the, on the, on the question. Then I have a, a question to everyone. So uh, I think the, the elder here started the, um, with a discussion that menopause does not necessarily mean somebody becomes, is no longer sexually active. But there's an important uh, um, thing that men need to understand. It's the hormones that happen when menopause that are the problem. And these hormones not just happen when menopause. It's something we live with from the beginning 
beginning of our lives. So when you're going up and you're going down, you have to remember a woman is not on the same level throughout the month. We are on different levels at different times of the month. Kindness and understanding goes a long way. Understanding your partner and where they are. Right? There are phases where we'll be the ones that are yay, we're late. And there are phases in the month where we're like, don't even touch me. Don't even. It is, it's who we are. And it's important as men for you to understand that we go through those phases. And it's not just a matter of like, oh, you are high and I'm low and I don't care. Sometimes we have no control over the things that are happening to our bodies. Uh, then, Points number, I think it was five and six, that speak to a man um, wanting his wife to stay attractive and also being stimulated by what she sees. Now, I also have a question how do we balance that? Because as we start a family, right, we all start with looking the same. Um, I'm all shapely and whatever. We start having kids. There are changes that go. You know, our bodies go through changes that we have no control whatsoever. I have no control of whether I'm going to have stretch marks when I get pregnant or not. There are things that will never go back to where they were. Yeah. Now, how are, are, are we going to balance the fact that you want me to stay attractive? Um, as a woman, a certain age is where you gain weight. There is nothing you can do about it. It is what it is. How do we balance you wanting to see this attractive uh, thing and me going through that phase and also understanding that as we start having kids, we start having more responsibilities. I'm home. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm at work. I come back. I have to take care of the kids. I have to feed. We spoke about in the morning that this woman wakes up early and makes sure the husband gets a lunch. Of I've been out since 4 a.m. You got up at 6 a.m., picked up your lunchbox, and left. I came back home. I had to make sure dinner is there, the kids are bath. I don't even have time to bath or spray perfume. How do we balance that? And as a husband, what are you doing to make sure that I have a chance to even go to the gym? I have a chance to even take a shower. Let's not even go to gym is too much. To even take a shower. We have Adventist men that cannot even hold a baby. Mm -hmm. Can you just hold a baby for me? So I can go to the bathroom by myself. Never mind 10 minutes to take a shower. What are we doing about that? Because it's a partnership. It's a team effort. The moment you want to like, oh, okay. Now we have thought about the fact that I'm too tired. Or you're not doing work. But I'm not going to dress up. It's not going to happen. I'm going to go to bed in my check suit. Because I just want to go there and sleep. This is the reality. How should we balance this thing? No, I'm tired and I'm angry. Remember, the pastor was presenting, he says, you go by what you see, we go by what we feel. So already I feel neglected, I feel tired and I'm angry. I feel all these things. I feel overwhelmed, especially overwhelmed and tired. How do we balance this? <laughs> Thank you very much. I thought she wanted to answer, my sister. I answered the menopause button. Yeah. All right. That's for men. That's for men. But I think um, the root of it, understanding education, understanding, we need to understand and we need to teach each other like we are doing now exposing each other on these things so that when they come you are not surprised yes. when you see yourself behaving like that you should not be surprised and think that maybe you, you are no longer a man or maybe you are no longer a woman you should know that these things happen to us all am i talking to you yes. yeah in other words as men of course not there you must know that there's nothing that has happened it's just a natural uh, event or a natural thing that is coming to your life you are not dead you are still alive you are, yes you are, your man also needs to understand that you, you 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 can be assisted understanding that there will not always be a sandwich there will not always be sandwich you know, in your breakfast or in your in your food. 
Sometimes you will have to enjoy it as dry. Or oh, vegetarian as you say. Go oh, vegetarian. Okay? And keep understanding, you know. Um, it's just that we, my sister there is mentioned, how do you balance it? Education, telling your man that, hey man, this thing you will not always get it now and again. Okay? There are days where you, you will have to sleep by faith. Sleep by faith. That's, that's called for, for amen, isn't it? Yes, yes. 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 Remember what Daniel did also. He fasted. <laughs> Daniel did what? Fasted. Yes, he was also fast. Yes. 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 Okay, my brother, I see you and I see him. Whoever comes first. He's, he's, he's standing. He's standing. After standing, he's standing. Oh, okay. My brother, you, you are standing. You want to speak, and then we go at the back, and then we come, come in front. The lesson was pointing to, like, say, what he needs to understand how to play. Yes. Let us not twist it to say what women need to understand about themselves to men. No, it's too much. Attract 
I will use, I will use a, a perfect example of my sister. The, I saw her in English. She, she didn't give birth. Uh, uh, she was still a, a girl. Right now she is not a teenager. Yes. They look completely different. The teenagers, she's like, she used to be like that 16 years ago. Yes. But she can't change herself to be like a teenager, to be like a old daughter. There's been a passage of time. Yes. So, I, I want to say, when we say uh, attractive men, also men need to understand that uh, in this context, to say what, what is attractive is. And they need to hold these women heads, be together. She raised a, a crucial point when she was talking about the issue that, you know, there are some men, honestly speaking, who do not even want to raise their own kids. They do not want to raise And you do not, you are trying to say this when you the next Men, men, they should do everything. That's what the Bible says. Women are their own pass. To test the men who say that, hey, we are the ones who do it. Yes, you are saying Number four, Christ kept what? 
the Sabbath. So this is the men that we need to esteem. You know, there are women amongst us who, when we're talking about men, they are bored. They say, but I don't have a man. You know, why, why, this lesson doesn't apply to me. But here is a man who never sinned, yeah. whom you can take for yourself. Christ himself. He also endured, he went through what you have gone through. And this man kept the Sabbath as well. Okay? But also we are told that he got baptized. So if we are baptized, we are just following after Christ's footsteps. This is Christ who agonized where? At Gethsemane. And he spoke loudly, telling to his disciples, my, my, my what? He says, I'm so sorrowful to the point of dying. I feel like dying. That's what he was saying. And all because of our sins. He was burdened with our sins. But more than that, we are also told he did what? He died on the cross. This is Christ. Uh, there is no love that can be compared to the love of Christ. They, they, keep on, they say that for a, for a horrible man, people are not likely you know, to give their life you know, to, for, to, for that uh, a person. To say that let, instead of you dying, I would wa rather want to die. People will not do that. Even for a good man, they will really, really not, not go there. Okay? But the last point that I have for you. Oh, yes. Did I pass the last point here? Yeah. Do you really love Jesus? It's a big question. Some love him with their lips but not with their hearts. We need to love Jesus with our hearts. We need to fall in love with Jesus. All right? And well, that's why we need to take time to say, Jesus, I love you. You know? Um, and have conversation with him. Okay? And finally, do you say yes to Jesus? If you say yes, I love you, Jesus, but no, I reject the Sabbath of Jesus. I do not show, truly love him. In other words, Jesus comes with a package, the Ten Commandments and the Sabbath included. Hallelujah. Amen. And so may the Lord bless you. This is our wonderful church where we love God and we include everything that we love about him. God, we love him, uh, we love his commandments, and we love the Sabbath. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you very much. I would like to take a seat now. Thank you very much. I think I have here. Amen. Hello. Amen. Good afternoon, church. Amen. Uh, I would like to thank the pastor for spending your time with us. Explaining matters of the heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm in church. I was in but I'm sure it's, it was matters of the heart. Mm -hmm. And you also took time to explain to us why we can't be pastors. Yeah. We may. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. And thank you, church, for engaging with the pastor as well. It wasn't going to be a fruitful conversation if we were all quiet. So we'd like to thank church for that. And thank you, everybody. You had a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. And let us not just meet a divine oasis. Our aim should be to meet in heaven. Right? right? Let us know there is lots of qualities, almost in end. That all shall come to pass. We must just aim to meet mm -hmm. in heaven. Mm -hmm. And this note, I'm going to ask um, Nanita, who's going to pray for us in closing. Let us close our eyes to pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for the blessed Sabbath that we had. All the lessons that we did. We want to thank you, Lord, for making our hearts receptive. We have learned a lot. Mm -hmm. Our prayer is may we put it into practice in our homes so that we become a families and we wash clean together. 
good and look again. And to my mom, says, thank you so much, ladies. Thank you for the food. Thank you for the cooking. Thank you for everything. He had already said in prayer, let us be able to meet together. Not just you. And to all, you said, you said, Papa, to all the men, males in here, to all Papa. 